Welcome to Rusty's Chambers Field here in LaRondra as tonight the Independence Tigers and the LaRondra Wolves battle each other in the WSTY Game of the Week. This is Daryl Smith along with Matt Greer and our cameraman Butch Lee bringing you tonight's action. Two teams going totally in different directions. LaRondra probably had their best two years in the history of the school the last couple of years. They're young this year trying to keep that tradition going in Independence battling injury and deficit are off to a winless season so far so they're just trying to get back healthy enough to compete in tonight's game against the LaRondra Wolves. Yeah rare occurrence in Independence to say going into district 0-5 uh, but as you said they're young they're beat up but uh, they've been in the games they've been playing so they're battling, and that's a testament to their coaching staff. Welcome back, by the way. We missed you last week. The wonderful thing about these two teams, it's always been a battle. It's a close rivalry here. Coach Messina, Coach Corona coached together for years at Independence. Sharp kickoff, directional kick, fielded by number 15, Brandon Cole. He'll bring it back to the middle of the field and get it out to about the 34-yard line. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthons even schedule Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthons Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. It's that time of year again, and we're registering for the City of Hammond Youth Recreational Basketball League. Registration will run from now until the end of November and is open to all kids ages 5 through 14. You can pick up a registration form at the Michael J. Kinney Center or download it online at www.hammond.org. For more information, give us a call at 985-277-5900. The Hammond Recreation Department, where we bring recreation to life. The last two years, the LaRondra Wolves have gotten the best of the Tigers. They've won the last two ball games. So tonight, Independence playing for pride as much as anything else. That's right. Uh, last two years that belonged to the Wolves. Last year, 45 to seven, drubbing. Uh, before those two years, uh, Independence had rattled off 18 in a row. So, uh, Coach Corona and the Tigers looking to get back into their winning ways as we start this 838 district. Uh, should be interesting down the stretch. Well, it's a new season for them, and tonight the players to watch on offense for the Tigers is your quarterback, David Steptoe, but also the big man in the backfield is Shannon Cage. Can this line get him into the secondary where he can use his power? Well, that's Cage right up the gut. Falls forward for about three. And that's the trick we were talking before the game. The thing about Cage, you've got to start him, stop him at your on your front line. If he gets into that second tier of the LaRonza defense, he's a hard man to bring down. Well, we watched him play against Kentwood, and Kentwood with a lot of good athletes back there. But, but by the end of the game, three or four of them weren't left in there after trying to tackle this guy one-on-one. -on -one. So Independence, one of those offenses is going to have to get first down, first down, and move down the field. Cannot afford penalties or turnovers tonight if they're going to be in this football game. Stepped over from the shotgun. Hand off to McLean. Well read by the LaRondra Wolves. Uh, I guess that play was by design, but a very lackadaisical, lazy handoff to McLean. And LaRondra read it all the way. Carter LeBlanc, a tackle. And it's the same situation we saw against Kentwood. Independence very good at going north and south, but when they try to go laterally, it just doesn't seem like they have the blocking or the speed to get to the outside. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and a long seven. And to elaborate on your point, with Independence, they can't afford to get behind because they just don't have the offensive firepower to come back. Step to around the left side. One man to beat. He's going to turn the corner and be down, down about a yard shy of the first down. Nice tackle over there. Ball at about the 43-yard line. They'll be about a yard shy. Let's see how brave Coach Corona wants to be. Is that number four? Is that Bickham on the tackle or is that McGee? McGee is number four. D.D. McGee. Now with a weapon like Cage, do you gamble and go for it on fourth down? Danger of giving LaRondra a short field. Yeah. Decision for Coach Corona. And I guess at 0-5, not much decision. Why He's not? going for it. And that was one of the things that the Ronja coaches were talking about. This 0-5 team, they're hungry. Cage off the left side. He's, He's out it. to the 45, and he'll have the first down. That surge went up right to the 45-yard line, so that's going to be a first. 
So getting just enough for the first down. Opening quarter here of tonight's action in LaRanger. It's the Tigers from Independence and the Wolves from LaRanger. LaRanger two and three coming into this game. Both, both of these teams are coming off uh, losses last week. LaRanger goes over to Walker and loses 28-17. They were winning 17-14 in the fourth quarter. Likewise, for Independence, they lost to Donsonville 14-6. They were winning 6-0 in the fourth quarter. Well, Coach Messina said, we have to find a way to finish games. Steptoe, fake handoff to Cage. They'll get him in the backfield, and they'll drop him down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. A pack of wolves on the tackle. Too many to name names. Well, LaRonja outgained Walker last week, 362 to 256, but they had four turnovers in the red zone, and that'll kill you. Independence with a couple in the red zone a couple of weeks ago against a highly ranked Kentwood team, yeah. wasn't able to pull off the upset. So both teams have played better than probably their records show at this point. But opening week of district, and this is where it all starts. Now you got zero and zero. You got to see Sumner last week, probably the odds-on favorite to win this district this I would year. Say. They look good. Pitch to Cage, hit in the backfield. Gang tackled. And a good job there of getting some penetration. Looked like Bickham in the backfield slowed him down enough and let his fellow teammates tackle him. They'll get a yard on the play, and, and, and Independence is not really good at these long situations. They picked up a third and seven. Let's see how they do with third and nine. If they can butt, like we said, if they can bust Cage into the second tier of the Wolf defense. But what you're seeing from the Ronja right now, they're flying to the football. They're gang tackling Cage. Well, and the thing about it is LaRonja knows he's the man they have to stop. Quarterback's got a good talent, but they got to stop Cage tonight. From the shotgun will be Steptoe, and we're going to get a timeout by the Tigers. Coach Corona has them back out on the field. It'll be third down and nine. Cage behind Steptoe. McLean in the slot. See if McLean Cole comes to the back. near side. Looking to throw, badly overthrown, had no shot McLean at McLean. McLean never saw it. He never saw it. Pass wasn't even close to the receiver, so it will be fourth down and long. And you would imagine this is a punting situation with 8.14 to go here in the opening quarter. You saw McLean from the slot. He goes right down the seam. Uh, Steptoe steps back and lets it fly. By the time McLean turned around, the ball was in flight. He never saw the football. Well, that's one of those where your quarterback just drops back and throws the ball and hopes you're there. No time to read, didn't even see if he was open because the ball was out of his hands before he even made a move. Punting situation. Now they had trouble with this uh, punt team against Kentwood. Fumbles this one. Gets to the outside of Steptoe, runs toward the out of bounds and he's gonna be dropped all the way back at the 39. So LaRonger will come up with great field position for the opening drive. Special teams haunts the Tigers again. Tonight's game brought to you by Dixie RV Superstores, Bill Hood Automotive Group, Anthon Chiropractic Clinic, Louisiana Ballroom Dancing, Fast Lane Car Wash, Malner Tires, Darren's Towing, Tangy Hardware, and Hammond Rec Center. Uh, That's your place. Absolutely. We're getting ready to kick off our registration for basketball, so everybody keep that in mind. It won't be football season forever. A lot of good things happening in Hammond Rec. Well, they talk about, you know, uh, a late winter turns into early spring. Well, a late football season turns into early basketball. So get your kids ready and come on out wherever you live. Come out and play for the Hammond Rec Center. First down and 10 for the LaRonja Wolves. This is Shalacy, a quarterback, bumps into a man. Going to pitch it to the outside. Bickham turns Ooh. the corner, upended at the 33-yard line by number 20, Javarius Harris. He put a hit right on the thigh pad. Looked worse than it was. Upended him as long as he landed okay. I'm sure he'll be all right there. But a nice gain on first down of eight yards. It'll be second and short. If you see Shalacy uh, on the center here, uh, probably see him and Graffia alternate tonight. Two capable quarterbacks. Actually, is that Shalacy or is that number 16, Hunter Flanagan? Carry off the left side there for the first down is Cody James. Solid run down to about the 26-yard line. It'll be first and 10, and according to our program, that's number 16 at quarterback. Uh, we did the LaRonza St. Thomas game to start the year. We didn't see Flanagan in that game. It was, it was Shalacy and Graffia. Well, Shalacy's down on the sideline next to the coaches, so it is Flanagan. 
getting the start tonight at QB. Flanagan, a freshman, listed as a wide receiver. Quick handoff, James, nice move to the outside. Good job by the middle of the defensive line plugging it up, but James just popped it to the outside and picked up some nice yardage. Yeah, James is a good runner, 123 yards and a touchdown against Walker last year, last week. Ball is down to about the, looks like the 17 and a half yard line, make it the 18. It'll be second and three. Pitch to James to the right side. He's trying to get to the corner, being strung out by the Tigers. Good job. Forced him out of bounds just about at the yard marker. It'll be close to the first down. We'll have to see the spot. They'll move the chains. It'll be first and 10. Good job by the independent de defender, though. He strung it all the way out to the, to the side there, but uh, James able to pick up that first down. So far, Flanagan doing a good job directing the offense. This time a one-back set. Two receivers to the top of your screen. Hands to James, hitting the backfield, but breaks the tackle. Down to about the 11. Shaq McLean was in the backfield that time, had him for about a three-yard loss, but unable to make the tackle. So a heavy dose of James right now gets him down to the 10-yard line. Now, right now, it looks like they're just going James left and James right. Very simple offense. Can you stop it? Well, it all boils down to the blocking, and right now the LaRanger offensive line doing a pretty good job, and when they don't, James is popping it to the outside. Two backs in the backfield. Shotgun formation, looking to throw this time is Flanagan. A little screen pass out to Curry. He's going to be inside the five, and it'll be first and goal. So a nice drive going here for the LaRondra Wolves. And there is in scoring position with 5.18 to go here in the opening quarter. First possession for the Wolves, and they're knocking on the door. Flanagan looks pretty good, looks comfortable back there. Well, a safe little pass there, a little check down out to Curry. Turns it upfield, gets them the first down now. It really boils down to can you stop us from here? Let's see if they try the edge with James again. Let's call it first and goal from the four. James off the right side. He's touchdown. In. And the Wolves lead it six to nothing. James right up the gut. They didn't try the edge. They went right at him. Took both wide receivers, spread them out real wide so they couldn't hit everybody in the box. And you had eight in there, but they just did a good job of blocking there. Gets the touchdown, delete it, six to nothing. See this kicking game from the Wolves. Carson Reed, the attempt, the extra point. Flag down, no play. Kick was up and good, but it won't count. Reed, a freshman. So Coach Messina getting uh, some underclassmen in here. Offsides against the defense, so a, a dead ball. They'll mark it half the distance and kick it again. A lot brighter here at Rusty Chambers Field. Well, not only that, we do not have the big light pole in the middle of our view at midfield as they've gotten some new lights in here. The Butch Lee pole is gone. Now this kick is a little bit to the right, but good. He sneaks it inside the right up, upright, and the Wolves lead it seven to nothing. Reed to kick it off from the Wolves. You have McLean and Cage back as your deep, run, deep returners. They've been trying that directional kick. Let's see where he goes with it. High end over end. This will be Cage at about the 18-yard line, and he runs out of bounds. Yeah, he lost track of where he was. 
Uh, oh. Now they've thrown the flag, but I don't know. I think what they're going to say is Cage stepped out of bounds before he touched the ball, and which would have made the ball bounds. out of bounds. That's right. Coach Messina kind of arguing there. We'll see what the call is going to be here. From the sound of things, it's not going to go LaRange's way. And exactly the call, they're saying he was out of bounds before he touched the ball, hence the ball was out of bounds. Like we were talking about before the break, they put new lights here at the, at the uh, Rusty Chambers Field. A lot brighter here, the pole's gone. Uh, looks really good. Last time we were here was last year uh, in the playoffs where LaRonza lost to Jennings 20 to 19. It was a close one. And that was the last time we were here. And it was a lot brighter until you showed up and it dimmed things automatically. First down and 10, Tigers <laughs> step toe. Hands to Cage, bottled up, hit at the line of scrimmage. In on the tackle was number 27, Dylan Vaughn. A couple other was teammates there to help him out and they get him down for no gain. So right now they're just reading Cage wherever he goes. Yeah. So far Cage is still under 10 yards of rushing for this game. The runner doing a great job of bottling him up. Four and a half minutes to go. It's seven to nothing, LaRonger. Independence has it for the second time tonight. Cage again off the left side. Now you see him dragging That's people. It. Picks up 11 and a first down for the Tigers. And he just wears on you. He is a big man back there at running back. And that's what we talked about. I mean, you saw the initial contact at the line of scrimmage, but he he drug people with him and kept those feet churning. Well, and you know, that's what we talked to the uh, the independent coaches staff a couple of weeks ago and said, this guy doesn't break long runs, but he has more 10 to 15 yard runs than anybody. Just because he'll get hit after five, but drag him on for another five, six yards. 11 guys on your back. Ball out to the 46-yard line, first and 10 Tigers. Correct snap. And we have, I believe, a, flat, a timeout by the Tigers. Okay, we're back after the timeout. Coach Corona wants a hand, had to straighten them out. Their second timeout of the first quarter. Cage left side, pushing the pile. Stacked up after about a yard and a half, maybe two. No, no, think about where we're from our vantage point right now. Cage isn't that far off of the line. I wonder if later in the game they start lining him up a little further back to get him ahead of steam going into that line. Number 79, Levi Taylor. Underneath the pile there around Cage's legs to pull him down. They gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Jabari Costin to the near side of the field. Milton in the slot. McGee and Cage, they hand it to Cage. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Makes it out close to midfield. And you see what I'm talking about right there. Steptoe turned to hand the ball to Cage. He's so close to him. LaRonda was actually in the backfield as the handoff took place. Well, the only thing, reason a lot of times they do that is if they feel like they can't keep the penetration from hitting him in the backfield. But I saw forever Herschel Walker be seven yards deep and be a great running back. They put him up close to the line and couldn't get the big gain. So, but they obviously know something with Cage. This isn't their first year with him. So it'll be third down and six, ball at midfield, trying to get into that Wolf territory for the first time tonight. Cage, two yards behind, and there's going to be a flag. I believe we might get a delay a game call here, and that's what it's going to be. It'll back them up five. So they get back to third and ten. Backs them up to the 45. It'll be third down and 11 with two minutes and four seconds to go here in the opening quarter. And that really puts a damper on what Independence do, because really on third and six, you got two downs to get that. You figure Corona went for it back on his own 40, go for it there. Now if Independence can push this back across the 50, you'll see him go for it. Another they flag down for a legal procedure. The end on the near side backed up before the ball was snapped. 
Tigers going in the wrong direction. It'll now be third down and 16 as they'll back them up to their own 40-yard line. So Independence not doing themselves any favors right here. Looking all around, you see all the pink tape and the pink towels and everything else here. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in the month of October. Both the schools participating. I've yet to see Matt Greer in his pink shirt, though. No, but uh, I've seen Jake and Graffia. Pretty in pink on the sideline with yeah. his pink hat. Oh, yeah. He wears it well. Receiver falls down and it's picked off by McGee all the way down about the 28 yard line. So after the two penalties, the Tigers forced to go to the air and a mistake. They turned it over for the first time tonight. So Roger, with a minute 20 here to go in the first quarter, will have the football leading at seven to nothing over the Tigers. A little similar to a punt right there. Well, actually it was. It doesn't necessarily kill you in that situation. But if you're going to throw a pick, you throw it deep in, down the field. And like you said, it's almost like a punt. I believe I said Jake and Graffy. I meant to say Jake Abdallah. I, I was wondering what you were talking <laughs> about, but you're right. James skips, misses one. My eye comes back to the middle and knocked down. He'll be maybe got a yard gain on the play to wind self on the tackle. And as we get ready to go under a minute here in this first quarter, you see what, a, what the running game does. It just evaporates the clock, which I know you hate. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when, it, when the clock goes slow and there's a lot of stoppages, I have to talk so much, and I really hate to hear myself talk. Y'all know that. Wow. Flanagan, man in motion. They're going to bring it to the outside. He's going to be play. dropped. Nice play back there. I believe that was number 56 for the Tigers. Shaq McLean, who will drop him for about a five-yard loss. So, LaRanger not doing much here on the first couple of downs. They'll have third down and 15. And McLean's a good little player. We say he was very active in that Kentwood game. Time ticking down. They do not have to make a snap before the end of the quarter. Let's see if they try to hurry up and get the playoff or they'll talk about it. They're going to bring to the sideline. That'll be the last play of the first quarter. Your score, 7 to nothing, Laurent. Lighten up the board. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthons even schedule Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthons Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. It's that time of year again, and we're registering for the City of Hammond Youth Recreational Basketball League. Registration will run from now until the end of November and is open to all kids ages 5 through 14. You can pick up a registration form at the Michael J. Kinney Center or download it online at www.hammond.org. For more information, give us a call at 985-277-5900. The Hammond Recreation Department, where we bring recreation to life. We're going to have to get hazard pay up here. Butch almost got hit with one of the footballs from the cheerleaders. Well, cheerleaders got a good arm. Flanagan swings the outside. James wide open. Up the field. Going to be short of the first down by about three. He's at the 30. So on fourth down, they will send out the punting team. Now, Independence able to hold there. They look to get pretty good field position. And as we are here in October, you all you baseball fans out there, anybody that's a Red Sox fan. That's me. My, my cohort here, Matt Greer, we had a bet for years, Yankees, Red Sox, best record. Every year we bet, Yankees would win. He called the bet off, the Red Sox. Well, they emptied now the are, tank last year. Now we're in the American League Championship Series, but he put the bet back on for next year, so talk about a jinx. That's him. Red Sox are probably done for next year. Quick snap, it's Smith who gets the punt away, hits at the, takes a LaRondra bounce down to the 43 yard line, so the Tigers, We'll get it for the third time tonight. It's 7-0 with 11-10 to go. 
So if you're a Red Sox fan, enjoy this year because Matt will probably <laughs> jinx you for next year. I'm going to get kicked out of the Red Sox nation. I didn't know you were ever in it. Oh, yeah. I was born into it. So Rusty Barrio filling in last week for you. He did a good job. I think he, he had a good time. He, he had fun with well, it. Well, he knows football. Oh, if yeah. you don't believe me, just ask him. Yep. He'll tell you. Former Hammond High School head coach. Former Amy Warrior, former LSU Tiger. Well, he likes to be known as the king of Amy, but I won't quite go there I with him. I thought that was Deke. No, sir. Step toe on the keeper, quick hitter there. He'll pick up five. And I've been kind of curious here watching these first two series for the Tiger because it's been all cage. When we watched them play Kentwood, it was a good mix of cage and step toe, and they got a lot of first downs, turned it over twice in the red zone. So let's see if they try to use step toe a little more here on this drive. That might have been what they were talking about. They marked it down a little shot. It'll give him four yards on first down. It'll be second six. Is that direct snap to Cage? Is that right? Off the right side, picks up a couple. It'll bring it up third down. Looks to be about three, maybe four. They lined up to do that earlier at, uh, when Coach Corona had called the timeout. They bring Steptoe over into a slot position and direct snap at the cage. Stevens into the game, replacing number 79, Levi Taylor, to bring the big man out, let him get a, a blow there. Already under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. It's seven to nothing, LaRonger. Tigers with a couple of first down, but yet to mount a serious drive. Direct snap to Cage off the right side and flags fly. And the one thing we talked about earlier, the Tigers cannot afford to do is make a lot of penalties. So let's see if this one goes. And it does, it illegal does. procedure against the Tigers. And that leads into some of that youth that's out there on the field. You know, even if you don't pick up the first down there, you're in four down territory. The way it looks, seems like Coach Corona is going to play it tonight. Now you back yourself up and put you in third and nine. No direct snap this time. Cage seven yards deep, step toe under center. Fakes the pitch, runs it, keeps himself right nice side. Play. Breaks the tackle, go. step toe is gone. Goodbye. Touchdown. Nice play. Good call. That fooled everybody. Well, it didn't fool the one guy coming in on the blitz, but he was coming but so hard. He was coming so hard to get to the running back. Step toe was able to run through the arm tackle, and the Tigers are an extra point away from tying this one up. So the big playability that we said the Tigers were lacking, they find one here tonight with step toe with a big run. Well, you see they line, like you said, they line Cage up seven yards deep. Looked like they were going to get him ahead of steam. Everybody knew Cage was getting the ball. He fakes the pitch, takes it himself, breaks one or two tackles, and he's gone. Fake the pitch, ran the bootleg around the outside, ran through the orange tackle of the oncoming blitzer. And now there is a flag down. Legal participation, so that's going to back them up five yards for the point after. The tying point after. And this is number 11 on the kick who is not in the program. So we'll just say number 11. The independence kicker will attempt the point after. Against Kentwood, we saw independence go for two every time. Well, obviously, number 11 wasn't on the team. They've worked somebody out, and they must that feel like he can hit some extra points. Maybe a soccer player. Kick is up, and the kick is long enough, and good. it's straight enough, and it's good. And we're tied with 9-11 to go here in the opening quarter. Number 11 for the Tigers going to kick it away after they have tied it up here at 7. Directional kick. Bringing it back toward the middle of the field is James. Across the 40, he'll be knocked down at about the 41-yard line. So good starting field position 
for the Wolves. So some, somehow between two weeks ago and this week, Independence has went out and either got one healthy or recruited himself a kicker. I think they went, went to the soccer team. We'll find out at halftime. We'll relay that info to you. So now let's see how the Wolves respond here to the tying touchdown. Wolves giving up the big play to step toe. 55-yard touchdown run. Roger sticking with Flanagan at quarterback. Hands the ball to James. He breaks a tackle to the outside. Nice crackback block over there by number one, Corey Foster. Nice pick nine on first down. Gives him second and short. And one thing we noticed in the Kentwood game, Independence with a lot of players going both ways seemed to wear down in the second half. But I tell you what, they played their guts out against Kentwood. Did a really good job. So Curry and James in the I formation. Flanagan, your quarterback. James once again makes a man miss in the backfield, breaks the tackle, has a first down, and much more. He'll be out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. That's about three times we've seen Independence get penetration in the, in the backfield, but not able to come up with the tackle back there. James real shifty back there. James doing his Warwick Dunn impersonation out there. In Tiger territory down to the 41. It's 8.47 to go here in the first half. We're tied at seven. LaRons are on the move. Are looking to reclaim the lead. Pitch, James to the outside. Cuts inside, fumbles the ball, it's loose, but he gets back on it. Heads up. Tigers with a chance to come up with a uh, turnover there, but James wisely fell back on the ball. That's the old student body right play that you see USC run for years with all those Heisman Trophy winners. Pick up of about seven. Well, good job by McLean. He put the, put the hat right on the football and popped it out of there. James alert enough to jump on it. I see Independence make a substitution on defense. You know, a couple of weeks ago when we, we covered them, they didn't have enough bodies to make substitutions. No, so they, they were... They were down to the quick. As a matter of fact, Coach Young said if anyone got hurt, he's going to have to change his whole defense. Inside handoff to number 42, Curry. Got a couple. Flanagan's and we'll get the, the first game. down. I, I wonder if there's some type of uh, injury going on with Florange. Well, there could be injury. There could be, uh, could be discipline problems. There yeah, could be. Nevertheless, He's doing a pretty good job for him so far he here sure in the is. first half. Leading his troops, not making mistakes. And this is a pretty vanilla offense you're seeing, but uh, it's they're moving the football. Freshman Johnson now in at tailback on first and 10. We're going to get a flag down. It's going to be a legal procedure against the Wolves. That'll back them up five. Slot receiver backed up. Coach Messina not happy with that. So you didn't get to come to the hole with us last week. We didn't go to uh, Sumner at all last year. We were there a couple years ago, I believe. They uh, enjoying their football up there in Sumner. Good football team. Coach Powell's got them turned around. We'll see them in a couple of weeks against a meet, which could be one of those games, depending on how things go could be for, for the, the district, district title. Yeah. Absolutely. Johnson runs into his own man. A nice tackle out there. A solo tackle on the ground there. That's number two for the Tigers, Anthony Milton. Got him around the ankles and twisted him down. Milton stood up his blocker. And the runner just ran right into his own player. So, but you credit the tackle to Milton. Seven minutes to go here in the first half. LaRondra with a second down and 15. We're tied at seven. James back in at tailback. 
Dylan Vaughn in at fullback. Now they'll split them in a pro set backfield, but out of the shotgun. Looking to throw his plan again. Swing pass to James to the outside. Makes one man miss. And we'll pick up about six on the play. He'll be close to the original line of scrimmage. Clock steady running. What has been a quick half. <laughs> Had to do it to you. You've been warned. So third down and 10. We've seen Flanagan throw the football a few times, but it's always been those swing passes High to the outside. Passes, yeah. Haven't seen him throw anything down the field. Let's see if they let him go to the air here. They will. Once again, James swinging to the outside. Makes one man miss and then leveled. Who hit? Who was that hit by? Looked like number 20 on the tackle. Javarius Harris. And just like you were saying, that's those high percentage passes. Get, get the ball to James and let him try to do something with it. Well, you get your athlete out in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you think your better man should make it. He did make the first man miss, but good pursuit by the Tigers. Fourth down, I believe LaRondra's going to talk it over here. They are. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthon's even schedules Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthon's Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. If you like riding in a sparkling clean car and don't have the time to do it yourself, then come on down to Fast Lane Car Wash. Fast Lane is under new ownership and offers a full detail service including buffing, carpet and seat shampoo, hand wax and much more. Exterior car washes start at only $4 and full service car washes start at $13.95. Fast Lane also offers pins all oil changes starting at $29.95. Fast Lane Car Wash located at 1165 South Morrison Boulevard can get your car back on the road and looking like new. Stop by Fast Lane or give them a call at 549-0006. Coach Messina will send Flanagan in, fourth down and six. This is a big play for yeah, the Independence is. defense. Really needs to come up with a stop here. Flag, no flag down. And if this is against the Tigers for encroachment, and I believe that's going to be the call. Boy, that's going to put them in goodness. fourth and one. That's a terrible mistake by a lineman. Oh, Lord. Lined up in the neutral zone. That'll uh, not please Coach Corona. Well, it gives LaRondra such, such a different perspective now on fourth down because you can very easily run the football here. If you can't pick up one yard, you don't deserve the first down. So big a minute tailback. Dylan Vaughn, the fullback, on short yardage. Vaughn's hit at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to be close, but I think he's going to be short. Yeah, I think he – yeah, he looks short. Good defense by the Tigers. He is. They know it. Milton out there also along with number 55. Shaq McLean and they hold him and will get the football back with 5.08 to go here in the first half. So both defenses doing a, a pretty good job here. Big stand by the Tigers. Now I tell you, if Independence could turn this into points before halftime, that would be huge for that ball club. Well, the thing about the Independence offense is we told you they're, they're clock eaters. So even if they can't get a score, if they can just get a couple first downs, at least LaRondra wouldn't be able to get the football back before half. You know Coach Messina would love to have one more shot at it here. He fumbled. So they get the stop on 
fourth down, then they turn around and give it right back to LaRonger in the red zone, and those are the kind of mistakes that turn ball games around. LaRonger can punch it in here. Oh, that'll kill you. That was Steptoe that fumbled the football he on the quarterback keeper. So the Wolves quickly back out on the field on offense, ready to go as you see the Tigers' defense, a lot of hands on hips, getting a little discouraged here. 0-5, oh and, and then all of a sudden you feel like you're in the game and you make that kind of mistake. If they can punch it in here, they can put it back on their heels because they will get the ball to start the second half. Well, you just made that big defensive stand, and now you give the ball right back to them. James, right side, flag on the play. Good tackle to the outside. He'll pick up a couple, but we do have a flag down. Hold. Oh, motion. Legal shift against the Wolves. We'll back them up five. It'll be first down and 15. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Penalty starting to mount up. The WSTY game of the week here at Rusty Chambers Stadium in LaRonger. It's the Independence Tigers and LaRonger Wolves tied at seven with our cameraman, Butch Lee, and my cohort, Matt Greer. I'm the big dog, Daryl Smith, bringing you tonight's action. Flanagan, shotgun, looks upfield, throws it toward the end zone, got a man there and completed. That's Jalen James there that has it down at the one and a nice throw there and sets up a first and goal from the one. You've got to be impressed with Flanagan. <laughs> Stepping in, I mean, this is a, the opening game of district, a freshman going against one of your rivals, and he, he's doing a good job back there. And one thing that's really hurting the Independence defense is they've been getting hurt on the run to the outside, so those corners and safeties are coming up Cheating in and run yeah. pursuit, and that time they just lost the receiver. James got open and got it down to the one-yard line. Sets up first and goal. Handoff James, right side, follows his lead blocker, and it's a touchdown. Yep. Right there, Dylan Vaughn just cut the hole through the line, and James followed him in, and they take the lead back 13-7. to seven. Now Dylan Vaughn's a strong kid. Just follow him in there. Reed to come in to attempt the point after. So less than a minute ago, you had Independence on a high, stopping them on fourth down, and then two plays later, they're back in the end zone. Independence Looks like Independence jumped. jumped. Yep. And exactly it, it's offside, Shalasi. They'll move it about a yard and a half closer, and then you'll have Reed attempt it. Low snap, gets it down, though. The kick is up, and the kick is good, and the Wolves lead it 14-7. to seven. Reed to kick it off. Carson Reed, directional kick. This will be Harris at the 23, and he'll immediately fall down. And the Tigers have it on offense. They'll have four minutes and 20 seconds to try to put something together here before the half. Yeah, well, Coach Toronto would like nothing more than to go down and tie this football game before you go into halftime. Without a doubt, they cannot afford another mistake like they had on the last series. They cannot afford a turnover and let LaRonja get the football back here before the half. Now, LaRonja with two timeouts remaining. So if they can stop them on first down, we'll see if Coach Messina decides to take those timeouts. Step to under center. Cage off the right side. Ran into Levi Taylor and friends. A tough going for Cage here. LaRonja doing a very good job of hitting him at the point of attack and gang tackling. Although it looks like they gave him about three on the carry. Under four minutes to go in the half. 
Hard fought yardage for Mr. Cage tonight. Step toe on the keeper around the right side. Turns it upfield, gets a couple. He's at about the 40. It'll bring up third down and three. Everybody just meeting in the middle of the field. Clock continues to tick. Coach Messina hanging on to those timeouts here. I, I would bet if they could drop them back for a loss here or whatever that they would take it here, but he's afraid to call the timeouts and give them extra time also if they're able to pick up the first down. Well, this time Cage, about six yards behind center. Quarterback keeper up the left side, breaks through, he's gonna be, I think a little shy of the first down, although they're gonna give him a pretty good yeah, spot yeah, if it's did. from this side of the field, he got and he'll have spot. the first down. It appeared from here he was about a yard short. He, he definitely got it. Looked a, a like he good hit spot. the ground and kind of inched forward, and they gave him the progress. So first down, Tigers. Get the chains moved. They start the clock, 2:45 and counting. Big first down for the Tigers right there. Well, Roger would have loved to have it back before the half, but what they don't want is independent score because they know they get the ball to start the second half. Cage oh. on the direct snap, nothing there. Are you kidding me? He came out of the back side of the pile. of the pile. How did the whistle not blow there? All I know is they're going to give him an eight-yard can. His cage just kept churning, and how he got out of there, I'll never know. I can't wait to see that replay. I was looking at the pile. I missed him coming out. Ah, that, that, thought the play was over. I guess so did everyone else except Shannon Cage. Taylor comes back in for Stevens. Now Stevens comes back in and it's gonna run to Phillips off the field. Carry off the right side. Looks like he'll have the first down. Not sure who that was. McLean on the carry that time. Gets them another first down. Now we only got a minute and a half to go. So the Tigers are going to have to turn it up a little bit here. Cage will come back into the game. Clock running again. Heard in the background a Albany score leading Sumner in the second quarter, 12-7. What a shocker that would be. That, that would be. That game is at Albany. Step toe on the bootleg. It's hit the backfield, drop for a loss. Number 10 back there, not fooled, Damon Abram. And he'll drop him for about a three yard loss. Clock still moving. Independence in no hurry at all. We're, we're under 45 seconds to go here and the Tigers really not in a big hurry here. Let's see if they're content to keep it on the ground. Are they going to take a shot and, or just go into the half happy only down seven? Step toe, looking to throw. Quarterback keeper, now he's running for his life. Once again, number 10 runs into him back there. Damon Abram drops him for a big loss. Are they going to let that clock run out and go to half? Well, Coach Messina not taking a timeout. I don't see Coach Corona taking one here. Doubt they'll run another play as we're under 10 seconds. No, well, you figured you, you gave them a, a touchdown on the turnover. They turn a the, the fumble into seven. So that's going to take us to halftime. Your score, LaRonger leading it 14 to seven. Enjoy your halftime show. We'll see you back with the second half. All right, folks. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. 
Anthon's even scheduled Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthon's Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs.
Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthons even schedule Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthons Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. Mountainers Tire Mart is the name to remember when you need tires for anything on wheels. Whether it's cars, trucks, RVs, farm equipment, go-karts, ATVs, or just the beginning. So if you need tires, Mountainers can handle your tire needs. Mountainers offers free rotation and balance on all sets of tires sold. So drive to Tickfall and see George, Andy, or Todd and get those new tires. And don't forget to tell Miss Joanne in the office thanks for supporting high school football. And Graffia back to accept the opening kickoff here to second half. Your score is LaRondra 14, Independent 7. LaRondra will have it to start this second half. Went down at halftime, spoke to Mr. Andy Anderson, and he told me number 11 doing the kicking off for the Independence Tigers. His name is Carlos Fuentes. Carlos Fuentes, Fuentes. just kicked it out of bounds, so the flag will fly and the Wolves will get it at the 35 yard line. And as we suspected, Coach Corona went to the soccer team and found him a kicker. And he is a freshman. So the Wolves will have it first down and 10. This is the WSTY game of the week from Rusty Chamber Stadium here in La Rancha. And it looks like they're going to take the penalty and make him kick it again. Cameraman Butch Lee, the round mound of sound himself, Matt Greer, along with Daryl Smith, bringing you tonight's action from LaRonger. And it's a nice football weatherish night. Got just enough chill in the air to make it comfortable, but not enough where it's cold. Not quite jacket weather yet. I know, because I mean, when it gets cold and you want to snuggle, it really aggravates me. <laughs> well, you're warm. Yeah, you want to be warm with all that hair. <laughs> be like wearing a fur coat all the time, huh? Once again, short kick. This one's going to be fielded at the 43. They're across midfield. There he goes. That's Bickham. Bickham down the sideline. Saving tackle over there by number 22 for the Tigers. 
Damian Morgan, but LaRonja with a big return, sets up a big start here to the second half as they're deep inside Tiger territory down to the 27-yard line. Down there at halftime mixing around with some of the LaRonja fans and the Independence fans. The LaRonja fans are a little uneasy about the score. They're kind of, kind of surprised that Independence was this close to them. Well, Independence had the one big play, the big touchdown run by Steptoe, and aside from that, they sprinkled in a couple of first downs, but not much going on for the Tigers' offense. Of course, the big turnover there late in the first half, which led to a LaRonja touchdown. See if LaRonja comes up with something here. James, right side, pitch, cuts inside, follows his blocker. Big number 72, Boyd out front. I think he might have got it back. Down on the play, LaRondra has the football. It'll be a first down. James has been excellent here tonight and making people from the defense miss him all night long. James just shy of 60 yards with two touchdowns in the first half. Well, that would put him now at 70, so he's well on his way to a 100-yard rushing performance tonight for LaRondra. Pitch to the right side. Number 12 on the carry is Javian Francis, a senior. Gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six. They're down to right outside the 10-yard line. So uh, what do you think the conversation went like in that Wolf locker room at halftime? Well, you know, I don't think Coach Messina was that upset because the defense played really well. They tackled well in the first half. Really. Offense didn't make a lot of mistakes but didn't quite probably do what he thought they were able to do there in the first half. But he's like, just keep plugging away. We're going to wear them down. And they did do a good job limiting Cage, who, who's – their big runner to less than 40 yards in the first half. Johnson cuts it inside, maybe a yard on the play to bring up third down. Of course, you got Steptoe that had the big play, and that's where the majority of the Independence offense came from. Now, on the flip side of that, what do you think the mood was in the, in the Independence locker room? Well, Independence, he had to try to be, when you're 0-5, you got to be as positive as you can. And you tell your team, hey, take away that one fumble we made late in the game. We played them heads up, straight up, and we're even in this football game. So limit your mistakes and we'll have a chance. Flanagan now from the shotgun looking to throw. Swing to the outside. Once again, that's Curry, but he breaks a tackle. And they've had a lot of success with that swing pass to the running back out in the flat. It's going to bring up fourth down and about a yard. Yeah, you've seen that play successful with James and Curry. And, you know, for Flanagan, it's, like we said, it's high percentage, not that far off the line of scrimmage, and let your playmakers do the work for you. Just get the ball to them. James going back into the game. They'll also bring in number 27, Dylan Vaughn, as a lead blocker. We saw what they were able to do on that last touchdown with Vaughn leading the way. The shifty one, James, back at tailback now. Actually, they're going to do a different formation. It's going to be a single back set for James. And Independence looked like they were going to jump, but LaRondra takes a timeout. Big fourth down play here. Early third quarter. LaRondra knocking at the door. Fourth down and one. I formation. Flag flies. And this Came side judge side has judge been judge. busy tonight, but it's going to be a offsides be against down. Independence. And I think that's the second or third time that they've lined up offsides. Just mental mistakes. Yeah, that wasn't a, a, a situation of Independence jumping offsides. They lined up offsides. And I looked to the independent sideline, and they had one of their guys down there right at the yard marker to watch it. And he, I saw him shaking his head, yes, you know. We just made a mistake. So one that's going to see if it comes back to haunt him here. It's now first and goal, four-yard line. Once again, I formation. Vaughn leads the way off the right side for James. He's hit the backfield, gets back to about the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Good penetration by the Tigers there. Number 55 on the ground at the bottom of that pile, Shaq McLean. Also in on the play, 51, Tyler Covington. 
We said McLean's name plenty of times tonight. LaRonja just playing smash mouth with Independence. And I think I might have saw that wrong at 61, I believe, there. Rashad Johnson, who was in on the play with him. Nevertheless, it's second down and goal. Same formation for the Wolves. This time, three backs in the backfield. Flanagan backs up there. He's going to look to throw. Pressure coming. Force throws. Tipped. Incomplete. It'll be third down. Still technically got two more cracks at it from here. I didn't get a, I didn't see who got a paw on that. The way McGee was celebrating, number one, you would think it would be him. I don't like celebrating on second down when you got two more times to stop him. Keep him out the end zone and you can celebrate. That's right. 8.21 to go here, third down and goal. Man comes in motion, hands to James. He's hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, still on his feet, down close to the goal line. He's going to be about a yard shy. And if you're Mike Young over there on the Independence defensive sideline, you've got to be sick. You're calling the right plays. You're oh, yeah. getting your guys in position. They're just not making the plays right now. They are shooting those gaps and getting well into the, uh, into the Wolf backfield. We have an official timeout. It looks like we have a, a player that they got to send out the game for the Tigers. That's McGee. Is he hurt or is that an equipment malfunction? I think it's a – looks like he's got a blown-out tire on that shoe over there. Uh, so, big play coming here for, uh, for Independence. Fourth down and goal. With Johnson back into the game for McGee. Plenty of time on the play clock. James Poisson Vaughn, there is a flag. Substitution problem. Substitution penalty against LaRanger. So yeah. now it makes it fourth and goal from about the, let's call it the eight yard line, seven or eight yard line. So now decision time, do you kick the field goal or do you go for it here? I'd kick it. Coach Messina looking for some, He's looking for some explanation over there from the side, Judge, but it was the head referee who threw the flag. I counted. I counted 11 players. I didn't see 12. In comes Reed for the field goal. So, mistake gave him the first down, but a mistake may cost him a touchdown here. Let's see if Reed can capitalize. Didn't have the ball down set. Only 10 seconds left on the... Play clock, Shalasi to hold. Kick is up, and it's through, and it's good. So LaRanger takes a 17-7 lead, but Independence dodges a bullet and remains in the game with 7.16 to go here in the third quarter. Reed lines it up, aiming for that 30-yard line. This will be McLean. He's going to take it back to the middle of the field. All the way on the other side, but good containment there by the Wolves, and he actually is going to lose a couple yards on return. Yeah, he gave Back from feet. the 25-yard line. But, you know, not a bad job by Independence there. You kept LaRonja out of the end zone. LaRonja shot themselves in the foot with a penalty, but uh, instead of the touchdown. Tonight's game brought to you by Dixie RV Superstores, Bill, Hart Automotive, Bill Hood Automotive Group, Anthon's Chiropractic Clinic, Louisiana Ballroom Dancing, Fast Lane Car Wash, Mountain's Tire Mart, Darren's Towing Service, Tangy Hardware, and the Hammond Recreation Center Department there in Hammond are tonight's sponsors, and thank them for getting us out here. Hopefully we can get some of you to call in next week as we go down to the swamp in Ponchatoula to see the Slidell Tigers take on the Ponchatoula Green Wave. Coach Tierney's got Ponchatoula playing well. Cage now comes out to the outside, lined up as a wide receiver. Quarterback keeper of step two off the right side. Picks up four to be second down and six. Hammond Rec doing a lot of really cool things over there, thanks to some of your efforts. 
Well, we, we have a motto over there, and it is, we bring recreation to life. So we, we, we aim at the kids, the adults, and the seniors. We do it all over there, and, and hopefully we're making a difference in a few people's lives around. We had a fairly successful baseball team this past summer. Really good, successful 11, 12-year-old teams. One district made it to the state championship. Hadn't been done that in a long time. Hand off to Cage, right side, still turning, break there free, up the sideline. All the way out to the 47 yard line and it's just hard to bring the big man down. Now it, it makes me wonder, the, these uh, these referees, when they're, they're doing the Independence game and you got a runner like Cage, do they saddle their whistles? Because they know he's capable of doing that. Well, and, and also you've seen that in the pro football ranks. You've got a quarterback who's able to break free like a Roethlisberger. They don't blow the, quist, the whistle quite as fast as they do with Peyton Manning's back there and somebody gets an arm on him. Right. So I think they have to look at that here. This kid here, his progress has hardly ever stopped yeah. until he goes down. Cage lined up as a wide receiver, stepped over from the shotgun, first down from the 47. Quarterback keeper, step toe, trying to get to the outside. Good tackle. Run down from behind there. That's number 11, Justin Zanders and Damon Abram came off that corner and caught him from behind. Loss of two on the play, it'll be second and 12. And, and you pointed out in the first half how independent struggles going east to west. It, it's Their game is north and south. Sometimes runners are not good doing that left and right. You see the difference it makes in a player like Reggie Bush. With the Saints, way too much side to side. east and west. Yeah. Now that he's he's got some experience, he runs a lot more north and south and is a much better player. Keeper, step toe, picks up seven. Into Wolf territory, down to the 48-yard line. Tigers on the move. Big third down play here for the Tigers. You would, you would imagine they got to get at least half or more if they're going to go for it on fourth down. Down 17 to seven. A rapidly moving third quarter. We're under five minutes to go already wow. here in the third quarter as both these teams running the football. Cage looking for the direct snap. Takes it, fakes the handoff, runs to the right side, hits the pile, still moving, still going. They're finally going to turn him back, but he's going to be about a half yard shy of the first down. They're going to get him, what, down to about the 44? And I'm not sure that that play wasn't designed to hand the ball off to Steptoe coming back up the line from the wide receiver position. Fumbled snap, so Cage just tucked it under and got what he could, and they're going to have a fourth down and one, and it's go time for the Tigers here. Yeah, no doubt. Trailing by 10 midway through the third quarter. Let's go, go, go. Well, Coach Corona went for it from his own 40 in the first quarter, so you know they realize that they have to score, and, and you're not going to get many fourth and ones. you got to go for it. Now, Cage, five yards deep. Steptoe, quarterback keeper, right side, has the first down and more, all the way down to the 41-yard line, so it'll give the Tigers another set of downs. As we had a bird's-eye view of that play, Steptoe kind of telegraphed that from our from our view because he was definitely leaning forward. You could tell he was just going to nose ahead for that. And the great thing for Cage, he got to stand there five yards deep back and rest to play. Now break. he'll come out the game because you know he's got to be tired. He's tired. I'm sure these uh, these LaRanja defenders are tired of banging on him. Flag down on the play in between plays. Let's see what the flag is. Unsportsmanlike conduct against LaRanja. That's a big 15-yarder. That had to be something said. This will take the ball all the way down to about the 28-yard line. So the Tigers right outside the red zone. So Ty turning a little bit here for Independence, able to dodge a bullet with the touchdown, save it to a field goal. Now if they can go in and score, we're going to have a good ball game here. But there had, you're correct. There was no action on the field, so it had to be something somebody said. And I'm sure Coach Messina would like an explanation. He, uh, he's got his hands on his hips. He was <laughs> mad. First down and 10. McLean, the tailback. Direct snap to McLean. Looking to throw the ball. Throws it deep. Intended for step toe. He's got it. Touchdown. What a pretty pass. You put your big athlete out there, take him out of quarterback and say, hey, one-on-one -on -one coverage, throw it up, and step toe comes down with it. His second touchdown of the game. Pretty play. 
So we talked about before the game, Independent is not the big play kind of team, but they've hit two big ones here tonight, and it's kept them in the ball game. And you give credit to that Independence coaching staff with the play call. It was an excellent play call. They haven't shown a lot over the first five games with the ability to throw the ball, but able to put their big play guy out there who played receiver last year some, so he was able to just go up and take it away. Now you'll hold for Fuentes. Carlos Fuentes. And it's blocked, so it stays a four-point game. So Laron Girard, 17 to 13. Fuentes to kick it away, and you see a little more momentum out of this Independence team as you see them on kickoff coverage here. Cannot allow the big kickoff return like they did last time. I was, I was Beckham on the return last time up that sideline. This time he's going to drive it deep, and Graffia from the 16. Straight up the middle. Got a lane to the 15. Goodbye. He's going to be gone. Bye-bye. What a backbreaker for the Tigers. Let's survey the field. I see no flags down. Untouched kickoff return. So they tried to catch him off guard by kicking it deep, and then Graffia turned it into a 75, 85-yard touchdown. And the lead is now 23 to 13. Well, we hadn't heard much from Mr. Graffy at night, but he announced well, his presence with authority right there. Well, for some reason, he hasn't played very much tonight. Reed will attempt to point after. Give credit also to that whole special teams because that I saw some good blocking out there. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, he he had a lane and he, he was untouched. So it's 24 to 13, and just that quick with 3:28 to go here in the third quarter, Laranja reassumes a a 10 point lead now up to 11. Yeah, you got a uh, you know the a round and pound offense from Independence, and then the quick strikes from Laranja. There, Shaq McLean being helped off the field. And what I want you to notice is the black shirt coming back this way. One of the LaRondra coaches went out, helped pick the kid up, and was going to help carry him off the field. That sportsmanship, and a lot of these players can learn. Absolutely. From that coach right there. Good job. Hats off. I don't know his name, but hats off to him for, for doing that. So McLean slowly coming off the field, but LaRondra has assumed a 20 to 14, excuse me, a 24 to 13 lead here. 3.28 to go here in the third quarter and special teams has hurt the uh, Tigers once again. They've given up a kickoff return for a touchdown. Another one set up the field goal, and then they had the, the turnover at their own 15-yard line, which turned into a touchdown. So the defense playing pretty good, but the mistakes are killing them right yeah. now. And we can only hope that uh, McLean is going to be okay. So Reed will come out to kick it off. Once again, next week we will be on the road in Ponchatoula to see Slidell. The week after is the A-Meet Independence game. No, that's going to be the A-Meet Sumner game. A-Meet Sumner game. Then we go A-Meet Independence, and the last game of the year will be Hammond Ponchatoula. LaRondra will be going to play uh, A-Meet next week. I'm pretty sure. Next week, yeah, at A-Meet, LaRondra. And uh, Independence will be at home against Albany. And Albany right now only trailing by two to Sumner midway through the third quarter, putting up quite a battle there. There's a, Coach Westmoreland's got him playing scrappy football down Kick there. Kickoff, this one's going to hit the ground. LaRondra had a shot at it. And they're claiming he had a knee Number down when 20, he Harris. That. And I think they have a legitimate argument with this. I don't think it makes much of a difference over he a couple of yards, anywhere. but it's the point yeah. of the thing. So the Tigers take over at their own 40-yard line. They trail by 11, 321 to go. And what they needed out of their offense tonight, they've gotten, but they just have made the mistakes on the special teams. Yeah. And it has led to an 11-point lead here late third quarter. And these are some of the things that Coach Corona was pointing out that uh, has led to this 0-5 start. That uh, we, we've been playing hard. It's just these, these, these little mistakes we keep making. And for LaRondra, it's been turnovers. And so far tonight, not really turning the football over. So that far, they have the lead. So pretty good jobs on both sides as we've had a pretty well-played foot football game here so far. Cage direct snap. Steptoe. This time, he'll hand it off to him on the sweep around the right side. 
cuts up field, breaks a tackle. Cross the 50. He's, He's going to go. Bye-bye. That is an athlete right there. Von Steptoe, big run, another big another play. One. A 60-yard run, and the Tigers will not go away. Mr. Steptoe having a huge night for Independence. Well, you remember we said earlier that it looked like they were going to run that play, but Cage kind of fumbled the snap, wasn't able to get it off. This time he was able to handle it, and, and you can see that play coming from a mile away from up oh, here. Yeah. But Steptoe with just a good job and athletic ability was able to turn it into a touchdown. You see Cage hand the ball off and chip number 10. Just got enough of him. to He was trailing Steptoe. Now Tigers trail by five, so they're going to go for two here. Try to cut it to a field goal lead. Well, now you got Carlos Fuentes that obviously can kick. So you break, get it within a field goal, you got a shot. Steptoe fumbles the snap, and that's going to go for not. So the lead will remain at five with 3.08 to go here. And three scores in about the last minute have made this a 24 to 19 ball game. Fuentes to kick it away as Independence has cut the lead back to five. Good ball game. Entertaining game, especially here in the second half. Fuentes kicks it toward the sideline. It's fielded at the 28. Coming up the field, this is Bickham. Actually, it's Johnson. Johnson gets it out to the 49 of Independence. Just across midfield, so great field position. Evan Johnson, a freshman running back. We've seen him with a couple of carries, but a pretty good return there. And what started out as kind of a draggy game, it's, it's, uh, the pace has really picked up here. So three minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 24 to 19, LaRonger, your WSTY game of the week from Rusty Chamber Stadium here in LaRonger. Flanagan, the freshman, still in at quarterback, pitches to James off the left side. He's gonna turn the corner. Not much. And picks up maybe a yard. Closed on quickly over there by the Tigers defense. And right now, you see Coach Young making some adjustments, saying, hey, they're not hurting us inside. They're hurting us to the outside. Let's come up and play. So now you see if LaRondra will make the adjustment, maybe, and throw the ball down the field again. They had a man wide open to set up a, a touchdown earlier. And Coach Messina has let, let Flanagan throw it a few times, albeit, uh, you know, high percentage passes, but uh, well, he's throwing it. What you got to love with Coach Messina, this kid's a freshman. Oh, yeah. Coming in here, playing in a big robber game, doing well and you want to just keep building for your year after year. You want to win this year, but you want to be ready for next year also. Valuable experience. Look at him directing traffic, moves Curry over. Now the timeout, I think, for LaRonda. And that is a timeout by the Wolves. Second down and 10. Flanagan takes a snap, looking to throw. Here comes the pressure right up the middle. Going to be sacked. Back at the 44-yard line. That's that McLean? Back on the field? 55, Shaq McLean back on the field. Must have been cramps down there or something, but it didn't look good as they carried him off the field, and he's back on it. We were wondering if they were going to bring the ambulance out. So that is good to see. Be third down now in 16. So all the momentum on the side of the Tigers right now. And one thing, regardless of the record, Coach Corona's got to be ecstatic about the effort that his guys give. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Makes mistakes, but big effort. Flanagan, bad snap, looking for on the ground, picks it up, rush. McGee swings it out to Ingrafia. He is dropped. Whistle blows. He's going to blow dead back at the 35-yard line. Big play. So the defense holds, and LaRondra will be forced to punt it away to a fired-up Independence Tiger team. Late fourth quarter, time ticking under a minute to go here. While we have a break, I just want to mention that the LaRondra cheerleaders, uh, first place in the Shake, Rattle, and Roll High School Division. First place at Southeastern. The dance team took third. So 
Good job by them. Smith back to punt it away. High snap, but he feels it. Gets away, wobbly end over end kick. Takes a bounce and goes out of bounds. Let's see what yard line they mark it at. The 32 yard line where it rolls dead. So with 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Tigers have the football trailing by five. Uh, looking to football this weekend, it's the LSU Tigers and the Florida Gators. Now Florida, a team that was two weeks ago thinking we're in trouble, we lost our starting quarterback, but the young man they put in it had a great game Pretty last good. week. So yep. Tigers gonna have their hands full this week, Matt. It's what? never, never easy against Florida. So uh, you gotta keep your foot on the pedal. Don't take anything for granted and uh, play LSU football. Hopefully you come out of there with a win. Southeastern at home uh, Saturday against, I believe, Stephen F. Austin opening their conference play. Yeah. Stephen F. Austin kind of down this year. Southeastern got a good chance to win that football game. Step to in motion. It's a gold out. Direct Everybody snap the cage, gold. fakes it. Now you'll keep it. Runs off the right side. And he's knocked down. Got about four yards gain, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Your score, LaRondra, 24. The Independence, 19. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthons even schedule Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthons Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. So the Tigers in white will be moving left to right and looking for their first win of the season, and they're in the ball game here in the fourth quarter. Step toe, round the left side, hurdles one man, gets the first down. Let's run. And I can tell you right now, at between the quarters hour, they're changing the end of the field. The Independence Hope faithful, who are few and far between over there, were on their feet pushing their boys, looking for that first win of the season. So give them a lot of credit for oh, coming yeah. out and supporting it, their team. No bandwagon fans on that side no, over it there. It got loud over there. And the LaRondra fans on this side kind of sitting on the edge of their seat here. Wow. We're hoping they'd have this one well in hand by this point in the football game, but it's first down and 10 at the 44 yard line for the Tigers. Step toe. I believe he kept it on the quarterback keeper there off the left side. Picks up working. about five. I'm going to give him what? Four? A little slow getting up. They'll give him a gain of four on the play. Second down and six. 48-yard line for the Tigers. It's early fourth quarter. They trail it by five. You know, in LaRange and Independence, two towns that aren't very far apart. All these kids know no. each other, so a lot of pride on the line. Hand off the cage and nothing there for them. Good job by the defensive line for the Wolves. Over the years, this has really developed into uh, uh, one of the better rivalries in the state. DePhillips in on the tackle. Well, and there's so much history going back between these two coaches. Coach Corona, Coach Messina, both longtime assistants to Coach Charlie Baglio there in Independence. And when he retired, only one of them could get the job. And fortunately for LaRonja fans, Coach Messina chose to come here when he didn't get the head coaching job in Independence, and it's worked out well for both teams. And a lot of these kids grew up together. They all know each other. Cage on the keeper. Hit at the line Good of scrimmage defense. and gang tackle. No gain on the play, and it's fourth down. I, I tell you, LaRondra has bottled up Cage all night long. He's made a couple of good runs, but I tell you what, they have hit him and dropped him for no loss more than any team we've seen in the couple of years that we've covered Cage. That's true. Not used to seeing this. So Cage fourth, right at about, he's at about 65 yards tonight. Fourth down and five, and they're going to go for it now from the 49-yard line. Big play here for the Independence offense. They've shaved it to five, but they would be giving up great field position if they don't convert here, and a flag down and a timeout by the Tigers. Big fourth down play, Tigers, step toe. A 
about four yards behind center with Cage behind him. Fakes it, rolls out, looking to throw. Nobody open. Throws it in the flat, short, completed. First down. Is that McLean? I can't see. And it was McLean, Hakeem McLean. And I'm going to tell you something. A slow development play on fourth down. McLean came from the other side of the field all the way across, but they pick up the first down. Yeah, and we right. got a player down. So McGee, the injured player for the Tigers, they, I mean, excuse me, for the Wolves, they get him off the field. Now the Tigers have it first down and 10 from the 42. Direct snap coming to Cage. Hands it to Steptoe. Blockers out front trying to get to the corner. Nice Good tackle out there by number eight. Evan Johnston. Well let, done. Let me tell you something. Johnston, a freshman, playing a little bit all at running back place. a little bit. He's all over the field. So a yeah. couple of freshmen playing well here tonight for the Wolves. And that bodes well for the future. See some young players on Independence side of the ball and 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 Roger. And here you are, that, that this 8-3-A district, Daryl. I mean, you just, you just throw the records out and just go get after it. Well, and especially since we just heard a score, LaRanger and, I mean, excuse me, Albany and Sumner tied up in the fourth quarter. That's that, anybody's that's, game. And nobody would have picked Albany to be in that game. So you all. just never know. Second down and 10. Cage, right side, that tries to bounce it to the outside. Another yes, good who? tackle, that's Johnson again. <laughs> and wisely getting him down around them ankles. That's where you get him. You're not going to take him down high. So third down and nine. That going back to that Albany score, Coach Blaine Westmoreland down there at Albany first year. He's uh, really got something cooking down there. We saw them against Springfield play well. Cage out, McLean in at quarterback now. Steptoe lined up to the top of your screen. He's looking to throw looking it right, going to throw it up deep. Double coverage back there. Steptoe goes up and yes. knocks it loose. Ended up playing defender on that play. Yeah. Number seven for LaRanger to safety. Cody Smith came over, read it perfectly, knew they got burned on that one once, wasn't going to get burnt twice. And once again, we got a player down for the Tigers. 8.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. Independence trailing by five. They have a fourth and nine from the 41-yard line of LaRondra. It looks like they're going for it. So the pesky Tigers hanging around. Another big play in this football game right here. Cole and Costin to the bottom of your screen. McLean in the slot. Sending Cage out, wasn't open. Late throw deep, got a man there, but overthrown. Pass intended for number two, Milton. <coughs> got to credit the LaRondra Wolves. They kept after, kept after, even though Steptoe kept it alive and able to get a pass off, had a man open, but overthrown. And so they hold and LaRondra will get the football. And yeah, on the previous play where McLean hung it up for Steptoe, it's just like you said, it was similar to that touchdown. Steptoe actually had separation, and Cody Smith comes over and makes a really good play. Well, they had an over and under coverage on it, so he got behind the cornerback, which made him look like he was open, but nobody saw Smith coming over from the safety. Easily got there and had position on the football. Luckily for the Tigers, Steptoe able to break it up, but now Roger has the football. Seven minutes, 37 seconds to go in the football game, clinging to a five-point lead. Let's see if they can run the football down, run some clock, and maybe score here to put this one away. James, left side. He's got the corner. Out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. And similar to what they did in the first half, James able to get on the corner. Tigers did a better job in the second half of cutting off that outside run, but not on that play. Now crunch time for both teams here. The Roger wanting to... Keep that clock moving, maintain this lead, and Penn is dying to get their hands back on the football. Well, that time he ran out of bounds to stop the clock. 7.31, second and two. Hand off to James, right side. Breaks a tackle, cuts to the outside. Out. Tigers in pursuit, there's a late flag down. Flag. He's gonna score, but we're gonna, this this one's one's gonna come back. Come back. Yeah. Good run by James, all for naught. This one will be brought back on a holding penalty, I do believe. Yeah. 
Uh, that's gonna be, is that going to be a spot foul? Spot of the foul? So he'll have the first down. Well, he'll have the first down depending on where they walk it back to. It should be a first down. Right. Right. So a fantastic run by James, wiped out by penalty. Well, not necessarily wiped out because the forward motion will give the LaRondra Wolves a first down. Could have been a lot worse for Independence. Ball will be at the 47-yard line of Independence. It's a first down. <clears throat> Clock stopped at 6.43 to go. It is 24 to 19. The Independence with a couple of timeouts. LaRondra only one. Official coming over, wanting them to reset the play clock. Saints got a pretty big game coming up this weekend as well. The Saints on the road, undefeated, playing the New England Patriots at New England, and New England coming off a loss, so That's it, never it easy will be a good fair. test. But I said three weeks ago playing Miami, undefeated Chicago at the time, undefeated, one loss once they played up in Chicago and New England. If they could come out 5-1, and one, they'd be in great shape. Oh, yeah. The worst they could be now is 5-1. and one. James cuts back to the middle, maybe gained a yard. Flanagan comes to the sideline after every play, gets the play call, hustles back out. Good job by young Flanagan tonight. Well, one thing about Flanagan tonight, you haven't seen him get flustered back there. No. You haven't had, you haven't seen a whole, whole lot where he couldn't get the play call, couldn't get the play off. He's done a very good job being a field general here tonight. He didn't have to go out and win the game. He just had to go out there and manage it. And he's done a good job of that so far. Pitch to James, left side. Nice job as McGee's back in the game, makes a tackle. It'll bring up third down and eight. Good to see that McGee's okay. I'm noticing a little uh, frustration out there starting to build. So third down and seven. Clock continues to tick, 545 and counting. Now, you don't get any uh, extra yardage here. You, you punt the football away? I, I would assume so. Looking for the swing pass to James. This time is cover. He throws it late over the middle. And pass complete to number one, Corey Foster. Big play. Great throw by Flanagan. He looked to the flat first to James. It was covered. He came back across and hit. Foster on the move and gets a big first down. Forced out of bounds to stop the clock at 5.24. Coach Messina's just got to be as pleased as he can be with, uh, with number 16 out there. Pitch to James. Block in the backfield. And they're going to stack that up and hammer him down for about a yard loss. Had a defender fly field, forced him back to the middle, right into the, his help, and they were able to stop him. Clock continued to tick, under five minutes to go. And give a lot of credit to the to Independence. Man, they, they've been getting through that LaRondra offensive line and getting into the backfield. You've seen James shake a few of those. I think James is going to have to come out of the game right now. He's got a problem with his helmet. Into the game is the freshman Johnson at tailback. For LaRondra, though, just keep letting the clock tick. We're now down to four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Second down and 10. This will be Johnson. He's hitting the backfield. No game. Shaq McLean and also in there was number 17, Chance Vetrano. At this pace, we'll get Butch, you know, in before his bedtime. Past his bedtime already, man. Oh, it is. 
a couple of hours, we'll be waking up for breakfast. <laughs> so third down and 12. Clock will tick all the way down to close to three and a half minutes before they have to snap the football. Let's see how much time they take off this clock before they do. Flanagan from the shotgun as Johnson and Curry in the backfield. And Graffia to the top of your screen. Looking for him. Looks for the swing pass, then he hits in Graffia. Graffia. Graffia makes one man miss and he'll score. score. Easily. And, and, and Graffia made a make great move to score, but you got to give all that touchdown right there to Flanagan. Yes. That was not his first option. He turned and then was able to realize I can come back across the middle, threw a strike on the move, and Graffia did the rest, and LaRanger extends her lead. 30 to 19, and Reed will come in for the point after, so got to be very impressed tonight with Flanagan. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there you go. You get the get the ball in the hands of Jake and Graffy, one of your playmakers, and you see what happens. Extra points up and good, and it's 31 to 19 with 3.39 to go here in the football game. So Independence now backs against the wall. They, they've had some big plays tonight, but they're got to they're got to look for one more if they're going to get back in this football game. So the WSTY game of the week, once again, in the next few minutes, we'll have to decide on our s and Sports Center player of the game. Uh, normally, we always take them off the winning team. Must be said, though, somehow Independence would have won this game. Steptoe with a, a fantastic performance here tonight would have been the leading candidate for the Tigers. But as it is, a couple of good candidates tonight for LaRonger. As it looks like with a 12-point lead, 3.39 to go, they're in charge of this game. They hold on to win. We'll have a tough decision. Oh, yeah. As of right now, Steptoe with 130 yards, 140 yards rushing, uh, two touchdowns, two long touchdowns, and a 30-yard receiving touchdown. So, uh, yeah, if some miracle were to happen, I believe he would be hands down. Well, and, you know, Coach Messina went into the game tonight saying we have to stop Cage. And they did. Steptoe's hurt him. They've slowed Cage down enough to where it looks like they could, should hold on to win this football game, barring a miracle. Cole right up the field. He'll get it out to the nice 35 open, nice and then tackle. gets stopped. That Cody Smith. Cody Smith on the tackle, a textbook tackle. So 332, Tigers get it. And got to get a stop right here. Got need a three and out because they got to score twice. Cody Smith just a real solid defender. A lot of good plays here tonight. You got to be real impressed by Johnson on defense. Also the freshman. Also Damon Abram made some big plays back there from his safety spot. Bickham. Of course they lose McGee to the to the uh, injury. We'll see how much that hampers them because he's still on the sideline talking to the medical staff. Look to be either a neck or a collarbone yeah. or something in that area. And they're going to need him down the stretch. One of those playmakers for this LaRanger team. Heading up to a meet next week, LaRanger will. Step toe on the keeper, only a couple. Clock not on the side of the Tigers right now. Abram to Phillips in on the tackle. Also number seven, Cody Smith. They'll give him three, but right now they'll give him three yard carry as long as that clock keeps moving. Cage the back. Step toe on a keeper, nothing there. They stack him up and he'll gain a yard or two. And step toe's gotta be exhausted. Tick tock tick, 238. Here to go in the fourth quarter. Tigers trail by 12. And, and it's, it's one of those things where most of these high school teams are just not adept at running the two minute. They don't, they have to take their time, get the play in. So when you get behind late like that, you need a big play. Blitz coming, Cage left side, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling across the 45 and will have the first down to keep the Tigers alive. Clock at 208 stops. Yeah, in a situation like this, you would like to have some receivers that can work those sidelines for you. And uh, Independence just doesn't have that right now. 
The problem is probably their best receiver is playing quarterback. First and 10, bunch formation, hand the ball to Cage again, brings it back toward the middle. The Phillips hits him and carries him for a couple of yards and finally gets him down after a gain of seven, make it six. But the time is against the Tigers. 147 to go here in the ball game. Looks like they'll be celebrating in the pasture tonight. Party in the pasture. And Independence will take a timeout. And you know, we, we're talking about the dance team. Here are the cheerleaders here on the sideline. Let me tell you, I'm gonna try to count them here. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. 18, 20, there's at least 30 cheerleaders down there's there for LaRondra. You see a lot of these schools lucky to have six or eight. There's 30 of them down there for LaRondra. So no, they, they, it's one of those things where it's a, uh, a big thing to be a cheerleader for LaRondra and obviously they did real well winning first place in the contest they were in. A lot, so, of, uh, lot, of, lot of school spirit here. Congratulations to those young ladies. And uh, like I said, that, that dance team for LaRonza took third. I believe Sumner took first in that competition. We saw them at halftime putting on, they only got to do one song at halftime, a little bit of a shortened halftime. Tigers coming back out on the field, 123 to go here, a 12 point deficit, and the Tigers in no hurry. And unfortunately for the Tigers, their loss last year to LaRonza started an eight game losing streak. This would extend it to number nine have not won since they last faced LaRonja. Hopefully Independence can step toe looking to throw. Being pressured, eludes the rush, and it's just gonna run out of bounds. And right there, number 90, Trevor Stark, he chased him all over the field. Couldn't catch him, but kept him from stopping and throwing the football. I would say Independence goes down to Albany, and or goes home to, plays Albany, and picks up a victory against them, but the way Albany's playing, you, you don't know. They're, play, they're playing good right now. Well, I can tell you this is a new situation for Coach Keith Verona. They've never been in this situation since he's been there. And who knows the last time into an independence team was 0-5. Yeah, I'd li I like to see his statistics on that, let alone 0-6. Once again, a lot of times you see teams quit. This independence team hadn't quit. No. They played hard, and they played hard every game. And, you know, I think uh, Coach Corona will, will get these boys after the game and point out a bunch of the positive. They fought hard. They didn't give up. Once again, the Phillips got him around the ankles and a couple of other Wolves hit him up high. Fourth down and eight and a timeout by the Tigers. So the Tigers here, it looks like they're going to move to 0-6, Matt. We go on the road to Ponchatoula next week to see the Green Wave play Slidell. Uh, we were supposed to see Hammond High last week. Weren't able to get that game done, so we've yet to see the Tornadoes. So looking down the road here, there's, there's only a handful of teams in the parish that are looking like, you know, hey, they we're going to make the playoffs. So it's going to be a battle for all these teams to try to sneak their way in. Yeah, I, it's, uh, I think... Sumner obviously is, is very good, and uh, LaRondra is talented enough. Um, and then amy has got talent. If they eliminate some of their mistakes, that they can, they can, they have a shot at it. But you get all these guys knocking each other off, and it's kind of like yeah. you know one of those situations there. What's the record going to be at the end? Does it get you in? Pontatula looks good. I mean, there's a good chance for them to make the playoffs. And of course, Kentwood's always a threat. They should be there again this year. Springfield. They got a good squad again, Coach Sir passing them down there. Well, unfortunately for Springfield last year, they ran into John Curtis. If it would have been this year, they wouldn't. wouldn't have had to play a John Curtis. That's right. Probably was their best chance ever at winning a state title last year. So made it to the state semifinal before getting knocked off by John Curtis. Fumble. Fumble snap. McGee picks it up. And that's going to do it. LaRondra will have the football and only have a minute two to eat off the clock. And they have held Cage under 100 yards. Cage averaging eight yards a carry coming into this game. Uh, they did a good job following so up. Let's talk about the SNS and s Sports Center player of the game. I think our two candidates is down. It would be James and also uh, quarterback Flanagan. Who do you think? You know, Flanagan for a freshman did so well. 
Um, and then you had Ingrafia, you know, with the kickoff return and, and the 25-yard uh, touchdown ca catch. That was a spark. But I, I have to go with James. He was the workhorse all night. Well, if we're going to give it to James, I also want to give honor and mention to Flanagan of three or four big oh, throws, sure. but just his leadership and his thing. But we will call the SNS Sports Center player of the game for junior running back number 28, Cody James who tonight is our s, &S Sports Center player of the game as LaRoger in victory formation. A good side for these fans who sat on the edge of their seat for most of this football game. Uh-oh. Now that, that's uncalled for and, there. That's frustration. And that was McGee firing off the line to hit the center. James just shy of 100 yards with two touchdowns. But he has been was so effective on the edges. Well, what, what James did for the Wolves tonight was with his running ability and the ability to pick up first downs was not force them into passing situations and put the freshman in an in a, in a area where they knew he had to throw and it would have been harder on him. So James did a, a whale of a job tonight, couple of touchdowns, and LaRondra's going to get out of here with a victory tonight. Improve their record too. Uh, they'll go to 3-3. Three and three. And the Tigers will drop to 0-6. But more importantly for LaRondra, 1-0 to start out this A3A district. Absolutely. They'll kneel on this one. See if they're gonna let it tick down before they wind the clock, if they're gonna have to snap it one more time. And you see Flanagan coming off to the sideline. He's gotta be on cloud nine right now with the game he played. And the officials not starting to play clack, so they will not have to make another snap if they don't want to. So the Larondra Wolves will come to the sideline and line up to shake hands after a hard-fought victory here tonight against the Tigers. Hats off to Independence. They, they fought hard, never gave up. And like I said, that's a, that's a, that's a tribute to their coaching staff. Coach Messina, Coach Corona meeting at midfield for the post-game handshake. And, you know, I was reading in the on the Internet, what, there is some state that has banned this tradition of the post-game handshake because they had so much trouble. But here we have good sportsmanship here tonight. These kids know each other. They fought hard all night, but in the end, they'll be friends tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and it was a pretty clean game. I mean, you had a little trash talking, but nothing – Extraordinary. So for the WSTY game of the week, final score, LaRondra Wolves 31, Independence Tigers 19. So for Butch Lee, the immortal one, our cameraman, my co-partner in crime here, Mr. Matt Greer, the round mound of sound. I am the big dog, Daryl Smith, saying we'll bark at you next week. Ow. Injured on the field, hurt on the job, been in a car accident, the doctors at Anton's Chiropractic Care will help you get back to pre-injury performance level. With treatments including chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy, and massage therapy, you will quickly begin seeing results. Anthons even schedule Saturday appointments to ensure that your treatment will not interfere with your schedule. So give them a call at 985-542-1640 to schedule your appointment or stop by their downtown location in Hammond across from the Columbia Theater. That's Anthons Chiropractic Care for all your chiropractic needs. Mountainers Tire Mart is the name to remember when you need tires for anything on wheels. Whether it's cars, trucks, RVs, farm equipment, go-karts, ATVs are just the beginning. So if you need tires, Mountainers can handle your tire needs. Mountainers offers free rotation and balance on all sets of tires sold. So drive to Tickfall and see George, Andy, or Todd and get those new tires. And don't forget to tell Miss Joanne in the office thanks for supporting high school football.